Hello. Well, ever since September 7, 1993, I've been exposed to college economics. I remember we were using the parking back in the day. Then in 1995, we were introduced to Maskell, Winston and Green. Some of you can totally relate. All these years, all this time, to be honest, I never questioned the teaching format. It's been until recently because I got a full-time job teaching economics, but also my kids are now taking economics at the college level. And I think, boy, it's hard to engage these people. So I went and I took a dive into pedagogy and I learned a lot about um, incorporating different techniques such as teamwork or retrieval practice or making sure that I align objectives, evaluation and material. And among those things I've learned about universal design learning and about the pedagogy of belonging. This paper talks about a strategy that I developed where I convey the following message. Dear student, I see who you are and I value and respect you and I want to share this learning experience with you. Now I'm sure many of us think that, but it's sometimes hard to convey the message. Let me show you in the literature review where this piece of research fits. So Chandler, Zaludek and Carlson developed this table where they explain the principles of universal design learning. There's three of those. Multiple means of representation, multiple means of action and expression, and multiple means of engagement. Let me give you some examples. Multiple means of representation would be, for example, learning students' names, pronouncing them correctly, integrating culturally diverse and relevant examples that sometimes in our economics textbooks are missing, waiting time when you make a question so that people have time to think about the answer, and about multiple means of action and expression and multiple means of engagement, there's an excellent example using an electronic book. When we use an electronic book, let's say a deaf student can read and can see the graphs and the description while a blind student can listen to the book or the very busy student can listen to the book while they are driving or assign small groups with defined roles, also known as collaborative learning. So let me talk a little bit about the engagement part. Engagement is not entertainment. Entertained students can be having a good time without learning. Uh, by engagement, what we mean is actively processing information and making connections between the material and how they will apply this information. Now, this is given by neurobiological research, where they show that the emotional aspect of learning are critical for the lifelong application of the knowledge. And in parallel, we have the pedagogy of belonging, where researchers have found that when some groups perceive that they belong, their scores increase persistently. Physics, engineering, and other STEM disciplines are using pedagogy of belonging in their teaching practices. And they do so because when students feel that they, do not, they are not a part of the community or they don't belong, then they invest effort trying to fit instead of using this effort to learn, conduct research, or anything else. So messages in the online environment are strategies that fall into the provision of multiple means of engagement in the universal design learning framework. They also attend the emotional aspect of learning, foster trust and foster belonging. Now let's focus on the experiment. I've been teaching statistics for eight terms now. And I've been using the same quizzes, the same exercises, the same textbook, the same videos. What has been changing is that every week I give an announcement, a message. At the beginning, what I used to say is, this is the material that we're covering this week, and these are the assignments. However, in four of those terms, what I did was to convey a message that recalls some of the experiences of my own students. So what I mentioned there is, R did not get installed. This happened to, to Jason. We are traveling to the other side of the world. That, that was a student as well. 
we had a birthday to celebrate or we're working a lot. They don't know the name of the student, but the student who experienced it knows that I'm referring to them. Then I tell them that we're having this material and they have these assignments. Then what I do is after the midterm, when I realize where they, what's their standing in the class, I go ahead and I do a personalized message where I tell them, hey, it's refreshing to hear your opinion. How are you doing? I had a student whose mom was in jail and I wanted to know how he was coping with that. I wanted to know what happened because Cooper got COVID. I wanted to know about Sophia who, who didn't make it to the Olympic team. Uh, and you know, every student had something. So it was a little phrase that I meant, you know, I know who you are. I know this is you, that's all. And after that, it's just a form, a, a template where I say, well, you are getting this, this grade, and these are some strategies that you can use to improve. Of course, it also varies, but I have a spreadsheet where I know if students are turning in their homeworks or not, if they are missing the R assignments or not, or if they are not discussing enough, and I send this message. Now, here I'm showing you the data that I got. Basically, the control and the treatment groups have exactly the same composition between males and females, international students, and white and non-white students. As you can see, my institution is very homogeneous. I only had one African-American in one period and one African-American in the other. That means that in eight semesters, I've only had two. And I've had in total eight Hispanic students. So you, there's basically no statistical difference between the control and the treatment. And what happens is that the final exam, that it's a cumulative exam, has a slightly better result when these messages are written. And if you check the data, it's not really the top students that change, they keep being amazing students, but it's the bottom students that improve a little bit. And this is the empirical specification. The model is you know, explaining the final exam grade. I have treated and not treated. I control whether if they were in summer or regular term, uh, and I control for the other variables. And basically what I get is that the treatment has a significant effect of six to nine points, nine out of 100. Now what I did finally was to do a differences in differences approach between the first exercise and the last. Because in the last exercise, they had a whole term of being treated. So I subtracted the first grade, the final grade minus the first grade, the last quiz minus the first quiz, the last discussion minus the first discussion, and the final minus the midterm. In that case, the result is not significant. In other words, it, they consistently behave the way they behave but this has uh, an impact on the, on the level of discussion. The discussion level becomes much better when this treatment is included. And that makes the whole class enjoying better the environment of the class. Finally, I do a qualitative analysis where I use the teaching evaluation to check um, their satisfaction. So in the control groups, the number is a bit smaller than in the treated groups. And in the control group, we can find some comments such as, please reply faster. You need to improve your lecture and the feedback. Uh, ask how students are doing. But in the treated group, we have comments such as, oh, I was able to ask questions. I was challenged to study and pay, and pay attention. I love the online class. The professor cares about the success and the development of students and so on and so forth. I'm going to leave you with this. Interventions that show kindness are not magic. They will not automatically make a student belong. However, a two-hour intervention of belonging had a lifelong effect in a study by Brady and colleagues. And the reason is that these interventions detonate a sense of belonging. In other words, students remember how they felt from previous experiences. And as students feel seen and welcomed, then this intervention may multiply a series of psychological, behavioral, structural, and relational processes 
that helps students feel welcome and learn better.